So I want to go back to it a little bit now in terms of, obviously previously you said most of your work is, is international. Sure. Are you seeing a difference between sort of the, the clients and the schools, the students you work with in the UK in comparison to what you see here internationally? Um, like, yes and no. I Sorry, this is such a macabre comparison, but forgive me, it's always one I go to. I think, I do think about these children who are in the Western world, in Asia, Middle East, South America. Of course, there are slight differences, but we've all got the same hierarchy of needs, good old Maslow and all of this. And this is the macabre sense. I think of like the World War when on Christmas Day they put down their weapons and they came up and what did they all do? They sung Silent Night in English or in German. They played football. Yeah, they They've got the jumpers out on goalposts. The Germans beat us on penalties. That's the joke my dad always says. Um, and then they showed each other pictures of their loved ones back home. You know, they were, you know. Yeah. And so for me, I was thinking, even in the midst of all of the the tragedy, there's so much that puts people together. And it's the same with the kids because they've all got the same issues: self esteem, resilience, exams. Who am I? Do I get as many likes as others? Yeah. Do I get as many views? You know, all of the, the haves and the have-nots, the fear of missing out, you know, all of these things, there's so much more that pulls them together than doesn't. And so without being so poetic, um, you know, we, we're the human race, first and foremost. It's incredible how similar we all are. It's a bit like um, was it Monty Python when he says, yes, you're all individuals. And they all say together, yes, we're all individuals. There's so much... I, I've worked with the UAE school kids. When I was in Sao Paulo four or five weeks ago, the answers they were giving in Sao Paulo were the same as the ones in RGS Dubai, Cranley, Southview and Gems. That's not to say we shouldn't find our uniqueness. I'm just saying that actually the way you tackle this stuff is the same in every country. You just have that slight change. You know, you might change the tone of your voice. You know, you might think about something which is perhaps a bit more culturally appropriate. But at the end of the day, they're all going through the same things. Yeah. And so are the parents, by the way, right? What were all the parents going through? They want the best for their children. Yeah. I read something the other day. It's like parenting is you basically just make it up as you go along. Of course you do. There's no book for it. No. Well, I'll tell you what, if parents, I recommend this, this is called Winnicott theory. And we teach, sorry, I'm going to sell. We do teach it on the counseling skills training. The Winnicott theory is called, basically, it's subtitled The Good Enough Parent. Because you can get it wrong sometimes, you can get it right other times. Just be good enough. Yeah. You just can't, you cannot get it right all the time. It's it's like with teachers. Do you shout at the kids or do you just let them get away with everything? Well, sometimes they need to be disciplined. Sometimes they need to kind of be like, come on, you know you got it wrong, mate. Yeah. Can, we, can we pretend this hasn't happened? You judge it on the situation. Oh yeah. So I'll give you an example, even from this morning. Uh, so my youngest comes up to me and she's like, dad, can we, can we have ice creams today? And I was like, it's quarter past seven. It's quarter past, and she goes, what happened now? I was like, no, it's like, have breakfast. Mm. And I just said, there's like, after breakfast, you know, we can sort ice creams out type of thing. It's the weekend. Mm. Think Me thinking, we've got time. Yeah. I come down the stairs ready to come and meet yourself and what do i find mm -hmm. both my children sat down eating ice creams and going what and i was like well we had breakfast ah so there you go T so in a way i'm gonna say well technically they did have breakfast and they, i can't yeah, fault them for yeah, that, that but as a parent you're kind of going it's eight o'clock on a saturday morning mm. and you're eating ice cream like cornetto ice creams in some ways i can after everything we talked about mm. i'm gonna go oh jeez okay and, but at the same time it's actually you know what that's You've, what I said, you know, the, it, you get it wrong, you get it right. I, I always say, you know, in terms of in sport, I remember my old gaffer, a sort of manager was saying, um, he said, you can't wallow in your mistakes. He said, because within six seconds, you're involved in the game again. Ted Lasso. Ted, Ted Lasso, he said that as well. He be said, a goldfish. Be a goldfish. But my gaffer, you say, I, I played um, middle of the pitch and I used to, back then anyway, he said, when you misplaced a pass, he said, why are you moaning? He said, because two or three seconds later, you're involved again. Next job. Next so, job. Get on with it. The kids I coach rugby to, that's it. You know, it's like they will focus on that and then they're out of the game. And, and the idea is... chance. Yeah. It's, it's next job. Next job. Yeah. And I've got them saying that as well. Next job. It's like, because there is always that 